It's Monday, February 3rd, 2014, and let's talk about what happened this weekend over at xdadevelopers.com. So as you probably realize, I do film these on Sunday nights. I heard there was some sort of a sports ball competition earlier tonight. So I guess congratulations where congratulations are due. Way to ball the sports thing. Anyway, on with the news. As I mentioned in the last video, HTC has been kind of apologetic for not getting the updates out to the HTC One for the US carriers. Well, apparently, even though they just put out that sort of mea culpa apology letter, Sprint's gone ahead and pushed out KitKat to the HTC One on their network. So if you're an owner of the Sprint HTC One, definitely go onto your device, hit that update button. Apparently it is actually triggered in this case, whereas normally with an Android update, you're in a certain selected group of users, and in this case, you actually have to go in there and hit that button. It's a user triggered update. Hopefully we will be able to say the same thing for all of the other US carriers in the very near future. I know my wife has been sort of frantically smashing that button daily, but she's on Verizon, so who really knows when that's gonna happen. Moving right along, there was an interesting story that came out this weekend with regard to the Android OS itself and some potential future updates to it. Now the first update they mentioned is to be expected realistically because up to this point Android has been 32-bit only and it only makes sense there are some 64-bit processors upcoming, so Android is going to be gaining 64-bit support moving forward. There were some commits made by people at Google, people who actually work on Android, who are pushing in this support for Android 64-bit. That's all. However, one other very interesting change did come out of this weekend, or the last week or so, from another Google employee, and that was actually to make Art the default runtime for Android instead of Dalvik. And it was a two-line change, basically saying the things that are available, the different runtimes that are available for your device, and making libart be the default one instead of libdvm. It is entirely something that could be reversed before it actually gets released to the public, but still, very cool to see them moving in that direction of making it the default. Who knows when it will actually be released and what version of Android that's going to be, be it Android 4.5 or 4.4.3 or 5.0 or who really knows at this point? But one way or another, there is a very bright future for Android, and I definitely can't wait to get my hands on it. I would love to get my hands on a Snapdragon 805 when it does become available to get some 64-bit goodness, even though the devices aren't going to have four gigs of RAM yet, most likely. Maybe by next year they will. Uh, and the apps aren't really going to support anything 60, they're not gonna require 64-bit yet. They may be able to take some advantage of some of the 64-bit optimizations that you'll get, um, but other than that, it's not going to really make that huge of a difference. Like I said, until you hit four gigabytes of RAM, and even then, not huge amount yet. Yet. It's definitely a step in the right direction, though. Now, moving right along, another very interesting feature was added into OmniROM this week, and that's an app being called OmniSwitch. It was created by XDA senior member Max Wen, and to put it mildly, it's an app switcher, as the name kind of implies. You call it up kind of the same way that you call up the Pi menu, where you go from a hotspot on the screen and you swipe toward the center and then it pops up in the middle, and you can easily switch between your open applications and do a couple of other customizable things in there, but you don't necessarily have to use it. If you don't want to use it, you can still use the default app switcher and there are other app switchers available if you'd like to use that instead of course but you can always get that from the latest greatest version of omni rom or you can get it through open delta and you can even go review the code over at the garrett instance if you want to just sort of see how it works and maybe make contributions of your own and actually speaking of garrett garrett's not something i've actually had the opportunity to use yet but if you are interested in learning more about it like i am xda senior member hashtag super user or just super user perhaps has put together a handy dandy little guide for xda universe in the form of an XDA thread, and it basically gives you the how to get started with Garrett, how to install it on your Linux version of choice. Uh, there's no real in Windows or Mac installation information, but that's okay, probably. And just sort of a general how to get started contributing and helping out Garrett-wise with regard to several major open source Android related projects. So if you've ever been interested in just seeing how the code works or being a part of the review process for patches that get submitted, definitely head on over to his thread and read through the information that he's made available there. I've started reading through it myself and I'll probably continue to read through it because we do a lot of work with Git ourselves and Garrett ties in very nicely with Git where I work. So it might be an interesting tool to use for our code reviews. Uh, actually just 
left field here, the, the team that I work on works so closely together that we don't have to have a unified code review tool. We just kind of review the code with each other. But it might be nice to have something automated. It might make it a little bit easier to do work from home or work remotely, which is excellent, especially when it comes to working on open source projects, because generally in something like that, you're not going to have everybody working in the same room. So like I said, head on over to Super Users Thread just to get some more information if that's something that interests you. And the last two things I wanted to mention, there were some forums that got created this week or weekend, whenever it happened. Specifically, there were a couple of forums created for mobile web development, things like Cordova and PhoneGap, things for just mobile web apps. And then additionally, a forum was created for the Sony Xperia Z1 Compact. And as sort of a side note to the story, which seems like it would be a much larger part of the story, the kernel source code for the Z1 Compact got released as well. So if you are looking to get the Z1 Compact, or maybe if you've somehow gotten your hands on one already, go to the portal post and get a link to Sony's Developer World site where you can take a look at that code, or you can head on over to this newly created Z1 Compact forum to get some more information on the device itself, see what people are doing in terms of development for it, and all of that other fun stuff. But you know what, that's going to be about all from me for today, because I'm still a little bit sick and I'm going to try to get to bed soon. Remember that the links to all of the things that I talked about can be found down in the video description down below. You can also find and links to my YouTube channels down there as well if you're interested in checking out what I do other than XDA. Remember, if you like this video, hit that thumbs up down below the video. We definitely appreciate it. Subscribe to receive our content as soon as it becomes available. Thank you so much for watching though, and I will see you again next time. Bye guys.